Welcome to Faith Matters, the programme where we look at Liverpool life through the prism of faith and belief. If you want to contact us, send us an email at faithmatters at baytvliverpool.com. Our guest today is Father Crispin Paling, Rector of Liverpool. Welcome, Crispin. Thank you. Welcome. Crispin, you've not been in Liverpool very long. Tell our viewers a little bit about yourself and how you came to be here. Well, I've been in Liverpool. We moved in April 2014, so I'm coming up to a year and it's been a really good move. I moved from North Birmingham, where I was a parish priest in a town called Perry Bar. If anyone knows Birmingham, they, they may know the dog track in Perry Bar. We had a university as well and quite a few other things. And so moving up to Liverpool has been a, a great time for us. I was looking for somewhere completely different, but somewhere urban, somewhere exciting, somewhere with a very different sort of ministry. And here I am. And so what kind of impression have you got of the city and, and its people and culture in the, sh in the short time that you've been here? Now, people ask me that all the time. And I always think, well, of course, I would say it's great, wouldn't I? Because that's what they want me to say. But it is genuine. I do feel that this is a fantastic city. It is vibrant. It's lively. It is stunning to look at and a stunning place to live and work, though it is a little bit windy sometimes. And it's somewhere where I feel that immediately at home, and most importantly, I've wanted to invite people to show Liverpool off to them. So I'm completely hooked on the place. I'm also struck by the loyalty that people have to Liverpool. People who've moved here, people who've born here, they don't want to move away. And I just wonder whether there's something in the culture here. But there's also something in the culture which is very cosmopolitan. And I just wonder, this is speculation, whether because it's a port, because of the river, that means that it's quite an outward looking place. People around here have travelled the world. Yep. The people I encounter have, have sailed around the, uh, to vast corners of the world and they've encountered things way beyond their locality but they still return to Liverpool, and that must and say something. Of course, that goes back a long way, doesn't it? Absolutely, uh, indeed. And, and being at Liverpool Parish Church, we are right on the pier head. We're involved in so many events around the city which link in with the Merchant Navy or the Royal Navy, with the trading uh, aspect of Liverpool. So, uh, so I see the people who've been out. I mean, the world in one city is the... Uh catchphrase or that has been used that's right. for Liverpool. And, and I think it was for an event or a, a few years ago. I think that's right. And, and also the other phrase I've heard is that it was built as a gateway to the empire. Yeah. And I think that's quite obvious when you arrive in the city and then just imagine arriving in docks or uh, arriving from the sea, you walk into this vast monumental city that was built to show off wealth. It's, it's a very proud city and there's a lot of waving around of 19th century money. And, and people are still coming, aren't they, to Liverpool? From, they are. From, from the four corners of, of the world. They are. Maybe uh, not in the same kind of numbers and, on, and certainly not in the same way, but they are still coming. Well, they're, they're coming in different ways, of course, and they're coming as tourists uh, if they're not coming to live. So although the population of Liverpool has shrunk in the last half century, the number of visitors has, has grown exponentially and continues to do so. So we have a visitor economy here that is worth billions of pounds a year. And, and I see that in my location. I see that when we unlock the church in the morning. You meet those people coming in. We through. meet them coming in. And sometimes it might just be there's a cruise ship in and we'll suddenly have a whole party of people from any nationality coming through the church doors uh, to look around or to find that space where they can stop and reflect and pray. Uh, sometimes it is just to see the sights. Um, but at other times, they're coming in by coach, they're coming in by train, and of course by plane as well. So we see the visitors quite a lot. Well, Liverpool Parish Church, St Nick's, as it's known to many people, or the church at the Pier Head, you know, various names that it's known under. Um, it's got a long and distinguished history, as has the role of the rector of Liverpool, which you now hold uh, that, that title. Um, the city's changing, uh, it has changed and is continuing to change for the better. We've just said that. Um, how is St Nick's and how is your role, uh, as ancient in a sense as it is, uh, how are you adapting uh, to the changes? Uh, it's interesting, I came into post and, and 
looked around at the ministry we have and I identified five key areas and those areas are the, the residential population, a number of people who actually live around the church is far greater now than it has been for generations. Um, the second area is, area is the um, maritime and the civic ministry. So we are the civic church. A lot of key events in the city happen with us. There's the commercial district. And again, Liverpool is divided into various areas and we are now in the middle of the commercial area. Companies, businesses are moving to be uh, around the Pier Head and Old Hall Street and, and that commercial district. We've also got the visitor economy and the visitor economy is very important. Um, and then um, the, the fifth area is of course our own congregation and the people who worship at the church and come in from across the city. Uh, and what are your plans? in terms of developing the ministry of the church over say over the next five years in relation to what you've said of those five areas? Well I think yeah. we we need to look at how we're meeting the need of each of those contexts and sometimes the need is one which is quite obvious uh, and the visitors who come we can look to their the key elements that they want they're looking for us as a tourist attraction and as a place to pray and there's somewhere where they can receive a welcome. And so we, we're developing all of those areas. If I just take a, another example, the commercial area. Now, companies are moving down from across the city, perhaps as the retail area becomes a bit more uh, strictly defined, uh, companies are moving to the commercial area. And our ministry uh, there is with business people, helping them to reflect on commercial life, helping them to reflect on their business and... I I always think it's a bit like the square mile in London, that, that kind of it, L2. It and do, do, you, do you see yourself like there's churches of a similar kind of tradition, Anglo-Catholic tradition, ministering in, in the square mile in the city? Do you, is it a similar kind of ministry? I, I think it is in, in some ways. Uh, and I'm very keen, although you've labelled us there as, as Anglo-Catholic, that we shouldn't be seen with a particular uh, label because the way we worship, I hope, will be inclusive of all. Yeah. And we are there to minister to all of the city. Many of the people I come into contact with from the business community are from very different Christian traditions, but they all feel that Liverpool Parish Church is somewhere where they can come and play, pray. So we're putting on new services uh, to at uh, different times to attract them. We're exploring uh, new ideas. We're, we're beginning to do some research to look at how we can adapt the services we do to the people around us, as well as some of the open learning events that we're starting to put on and some of the things that are coming up in Lent, which I think we're going to talk about a bit later. Yeah, and so you've got the, the new development that's taking place, the, the L2 development, which is the the, uh, the North Docks, is that right? Um, yes, all the Peel Holding yeah, yeah, the Peel Holding development. And you, you planning, got any ideas or plans to... Um, um, this, this is a very exciting development because it's going to be the biggest physical change to the waterfront in a generation since the south of the river was done and we need to be looking at how we're going to minister to the people who live there and that's partly within our parish and partly next door in Kirkdale as well. Clearly our ministry there is going to have to be a fairly mixed economy ministry just as it is at the moment in that it's such a diverse development that it will be heavily residential but also heavily commercial and uh, an element of industrial and all these different aspects are going to uh, need the church to help it reflect, help people to uh, work through their lives and the, through the prism of faith. Absolutely, so exciting times. I think so, yes. And on, on your staff, you've got a, um, another another priest working with you, Father we, we've David? We've got two, two clergy. Yeah. Um, got uh, Father David and the Reverend Michelle as well. And then we've got other support staff in the church. So uh, I feel we're, we're well resourced to minister to the city. And of course, uh, your your wife's a, a theologian as well, so she's yes, she, is she, she's is she also around, an Anglican doing, priest, and yeah. she's a priest as well. And so, she, is she doing anything in the church, or too busy in the week? Uh, no, no, she she doesn't uh, work at Liverpool Parish Church. I think we've got enough clergy. Um, yeah. Actually, she helps out at other parishes around Liverpool oh, she? Yeah, when she's know. when she's in the city, but she works away some of the time. Yeah. Okay, um, we're now going to go to the uh, commercial break and uh, when we come back we'll talk a bit more about the church perhaps and also about Lent. Thank you.
Welcome back to Faith Matters. Our guest this week is Father Crispin Paling from Liverpool Parish Church. Um, Crispin, you've got some big events coming up uh, later in the year, uh, exciting events for the church and for the city. Tell us a bit about those. I think one of the great privileges of being Rector of Liverpool is being at the heart of so many events that are key to the life of the city. Uh, we've just had the Lords Mayor's civic service at church and we're planning at the moment uh, a few events coming up. We've got the launch of the Liverpool Commonwealth Association uh, in March and later in the year we've got events which will affect the whole city. The coming of the three queens, Cunard's three queens to Liverpool is going to be very big. There are going to be hundreds of thousands of people on the streets. It'd be like These the giants. And the, the three queens, that's right, the, yeah. the liners that they, they cut, that are coming. And, and it's going to be quite a show as well as they manoeuvre in the river and there'll be events on the pierhead. And the parish church is going to be at the centre of that, so watch out for more details of that near the time. Just before that happens, at the beginning of May, we've got the centenary of the sinking of the Lusitania. Right. Now, the Lusitania... The first World War War? That's yep. right. Um, and the Lusitania was the passenger liner, which was uh, sunk by a German U-boat and was one of the key elements that brought the United States into the First World War. They didn't actually join for another couple of years, but it was uh, the sinking of that ship that made... American public opinion shift towards um, joining the war and away from isolationism. So uh, it was a very, very important event, but it's very important for this city because a lot of the crew were from Liverpool. And even now, if you go to the north of the city and Vauxhall area, you'll find a lot of people whose ancestors or family members were part of that crew. But in fact, we're having people all over the country getting in touch and the Maritime Museum are opening a new gallery and they're coordinating a lot of uh, contacts from... So what are you going to do? So we're going to, have, um, we're going to have our main, the main celebration of the centenary in church on Thursday the 7th of May at one o'clock and everyone's welcome. It might be a bit of a squeeze but everyone is welcome and we're going to retell that story through um, hopefully a mixture of drama and narrative and worship and, and hymns and readings and then we'll process down to the Lusitania propeller, the pier head for an act of remembrance to remember all those who died and that's going to be a very important event for the city and the Merchant Navy connections. And those families that you just mentioned. And the families, well. that's right. And they are coming from, from everywhere. And uh, I've been in contact with one recently who's the, uh, the grandson of the radio officer. And the radio officer sent the distress signals from the Lusitania and kept sending until the very last moment when he knew he had to leave. And as he walked out of the door, he locked the door and popped the key in his pocket. Quite why, I don't know, because the ship was, was heading for the bottom, but it must have been habit. And he's lent that key now to the Maritime Museum, uh, along with his ancestors' cufflinks as well. That'll be on display in the new gallery, which opens on the 27th of March. Interesting. Let, let's come to Lent now. Um, Lent starts, um, just looking at my notes here, Ash Wednesday, of course, which is February uh, the 15th. 17th. 17th, February the 17th, wrong date there. Now... Um, Sorry, it's the 18th, actually. It's the 18th. It's the 18th. Should um, we agree well, on that? It's definitely uh, the 18th. Lent, um, for people, is, you know, when people think about Lent, they kind of think perhaps about giving up chocolate or uh, something like that. But there's much more to Lent. Uh, you know, what, 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 what is really Lent all about and how is it relevant uh, to today? Is it relevant? I think there's something in the church's history which has led people to think that, that Lent and, and Advent as well, let's put the two together, they're what we call penitential seasons in the church, that basically you can't have a good time at a big festival such as Easter or Christmas unless you've been made to suffer a bit first. And I'd like to argue that's not really what Lent is about or, or Advent. We don't need to suffer before we can enjoy something. So it's not about suffering. Uh, it's about understanding oneself and oneself in relation to these great events in the church's calendar and in the narrative of the life of Jesus. So during Lent, the church has often encouraged people to give things up. And in medieval times, that would 
usually mean giving up meat and giving up dairy products. Don't forget on Shrove Tuesday, the day before Ash Wednesday, uh, the pancake tradition comes from using up dairy products. Actually, if you come to Liverpool Parish Church on Shrove Tuesday at 11 o'clock, you'll find chefs from the hotels around us having a pancake race in the gardens. Oh, really? Um, yeah, not, which should... not, not seen that in my five years. I'll have to come down um, and have So a look we've got that. a special trophy as well for them. But, the, but then, the, the, traditionally, you gave things up. Now, these days, people rarely give up dairy products, and some people would still give up meat, but they give up other things instead. But as, as I said, it's not about suffering. It's not about making yourself uh, into a, a quivering wreck by the time of the celebration. It's about giving yourself time to reflect on your relationship to the festival and also who you are as a person. So let me just explore that for a moment more because one of the things that we uh, do in our lives is we get subverted by the events around us. Sometimes that just means living our daily lives. I think we all know that as an experience that we get caught up with what we have to do. My diary is full and I go from one event to the next. And even at home when we're eating in the evening or going out with friends perhaps, going for food or a drink, again, these become the events in our lives. And Lent is sometimes a time when we can just take a step back and usually we'll highlight particular events or aspects of our lives, which might be food or drink, where we, we say, well, no, we're going to stand back from that. And the reason we do that is that there's a conscious decision to look at ourselves. What is important to me? Now, what is important to me is not eating and drinking all the time. It's not about moving from one diary event to another in the busy lives that we all have. What is important to me is knowing that I am a child of God, knowing that I'm in a relationship with Jesus Christ and that through faith and through the sacrifice of the cross, we're brought to eternal life through Jesus. So those are the important things which we reflect on at in Holy Week and at Easter. Preparing for that in Lent is done by stepping back from the normal things that we do without thinking. So I think the conscious element, the conscious decision-making element of Lent is key to how we approach Lent. Now, that might mean that you want to give up chocolate. Personally, I find that quite a difficult sacrifice. But everyone will have their own um, idea of what it is that they could step back from in Lent. And then, of course, some people would prefer to take things up instead. Whether you're giving up or taking up, the effect is the same. It's a moment to stand and look at yourself so are, are you giving up anything? You know, let our viewers in turn, you know, into your, your secret I'd say with, vice that you're going to give up. With two weeks left to go, I haven't yet made a decision. And some years I do give something up, alcohol or chocolate, and other years I take something up instead. And if I'm feeling really holy, I do both. But the sort of things I might take up and, will oh, go on. And so. you can... You can, you can uh, uh, do Lent courses, can't you? I mean, I, I was in the cathedral the other day in the bookshop, and there's a whole table now of of books and courses and things that you can do for Lent. That That's you can, right. You can follow in your own time, or you can do it in. In, yes. in, together with people in, in, a, in a church. That's right. I remember a few years ago in my last parish, I uh, produced a booklet for everyone in the congregation. They weren't all able to be at the same place at the same time. And, and sometimes time and place become very important in our lives uh, in a way that's to do with our busy diaries. And time and place is not always realistic, but I was encouraging the congregation to do the same things, follow the same discipline of study, thought and prayer but in, in their own time in different places. Um, so I, I think most churches try and put something on in Lent. Um, I mean, it sounds similar in a way to Ramadan, uh, in a way. Is it it's the same kind of principle? Well, but, um, I, I, I think there is something, that there is certainly a crossover, that uh, a lot of major faiths, a lot of the major faiths have an element of fasting in them. They've got an element of penitence and reflection, um, an element of... of joyous celebration as well uh, and obviously Ramadan uh, is then um, the culmination is greater Eid uh, and so in our penitential so seasons. There's a similar kind of principle. It, there is yeah. a similar principle. And is there something in Judaism that's similar? It must be. Uh, uh, yeah. Again the, the, their so major that, the, feasts. The kind of um, rhythm of the year. That's yeah. right um, yeah. and the rhythm of the year is important as we as we keep 
uh, Christianity as, as part of our lives. And actually we're marking, just as we mark our own birthdays and our own anniversaries. But it sounds as if this is something that, you know, secular people could engage with, you know, because we all need to withdraw and, uh, and to reflect. Absolutely, and, um, yes. And particularly the people around you in the city centre. Yes. And, and I know that you're doing, you've got the leaflet there in front of you. You've got, a, you've got, you, you've got something you're running through. Lent. That's right, yes. And, and, and this is I part we, of... We've got a minute for you to just give us a quick... Well, let me give you, give you that minute. This is part of our gift to the city, that the Lent talks, they, so the history of them stretches back to before the Second World War. Um, we've got uh, weekly talks, and some of them are interactive, some of them are performances. They're not all religious. We've got an actress coming. We've got a media evening with Phil Redmond and uh, Roger Phillips and well, the editor of The Echo. Um, we've got a, a, a major author, one of the most prominent authors uh, in the country at the moment, coming. These are on Thursdays at 6 o'clock. And on your website. You Have a look at our website, www.livpc.co.uk. Crispin, thank you so much for uh, being with us today. Great to see you. Thank you. See you soon.